Hello out there, I'm Jeremiah from Join the Technicians, and today I'd like to show you how I built what I would consider the best portable soldering station I've ever used. This is the Solder Hero Mark V, and it's a big upgrade from my previous version, the Mark IV. This one had a few problems. One, I made the mistake of using an LM350BT linear voltage regulator to control my soldering iron temperature. That device generates lots of waste heat and is really inefficient. The second mistake I made was to use a sealed lead acid battery. A lot of times I have to make solder connections in the cold of winter, and sealed lead acids really don't do well in the cold, so it was time for an upgrade. Now inside, I've got four of these 18650 laptop cells, and I'm keeping them all happy using one of these generic eBay battery protection circuits. Last time I checked, these are still about $2 with free shipping. Inside, I've got a 3 amp buck mold regulator, and that's again about a dollar on eBay. That's what I'm using to control my soldering iron temperature. Inside of here is effectively just a resistor, that's our heating element, and that resistor reacts very linearly with a voltage input, so as long as you have a fixed voltage, you can have a pretty good idea what your fixed temperature is going to be. The reason I really love this solder system is because it gets hot incredibly fast. Let me show you just how fast it gets hot, but first let me throw a stopwatch up on screen, and today we're going to see how long it takes before I can solder this black wire onto this board. Ready? Go! Done. If you do have to make a field solder repair and you don't have an outlet nearby, you could use one of these. This is a butane soldering iron and they come in a lot of different varieties. There's a few problems I have with these. The first is that this igniter doesn't always work, and sometimes once the gas lights it will go back out again. The second problem I have is that lots of heat comes out of here when the gas is burning, and that can melt nearby components or burn things on the board. But the third problem I have, and the biggest of all, is that these things generally get really, really hot at the tip, and you can burn the circuit board you're trying to work on, which is really no good. The second option you have are these cheap battery powered soldering irons. Now I know these come in a range of prices, but I've used quite a few of them and I've not really been happy with any. They generally don't deliver much heat or have much power, and you can't solder anything with a large pad underneath it or anything that has a big connection. Let's cover a little bit about how this thing is physically built. Let me show you what's inside. So here are those four 18650 batteries, all wired in series. And here's our 3 amp buck mode converter. Inside of here I have two LEDs, a white one to indicate when the button is pressed on the soldering tip, I'll show you that in a second, and a second one to indicate power. The handpiece is just made from some hobbyist brass tubing. I've got two neodymium magnets on here so I can stick this to nearby metal objects if I want to hang it from something. I've taken a cord retainer from another power supply and stuck that on the back to give me some relief here, and this is just a piece of USB cable, but it's pretty thick stuff so it can take about 3 amps of continuous current. This button on here is what really makes the system powerful. When you press it, a MOSFET inside here activates, giving all the power from this 4 cell battery straight to the tip and giving you an incredibly fast heat up time. When you let go of the button, it goes automatically into voltage control mode to control the temperature of the tip. So I'll show you that now. So when I press this button, you can see that white LED come on and that's indicating full voltage going to the tip. Here's the charging port. You can put anything between 16.8 and 20 volts in. I'm just using this modified Lenovo laptop adapter and I've turned the output from 20 down to 16.8 just to guarantee I can't overvolt these batteries, even though technically our battery protection circuit will take care of that for us. One of the reasons the soldering system works so well is because I'm using these Pace HeatWise soldering tips. They call them cartridges, and they cost between $15 to $20 online. They come in lots of different sizes and varieties, so you have a lot of choices. You can also get other brands, but I like Pace because they work well between 6 to 12 volts for heating, and they can handle up to 16 volts directly to heat the element up really fast. Well hey, thanks for watching the video. I really hope you found the information useful, and if you liked what you've seen, please be sure to hit that little subscribe button right there. If you have ideas for other videos or questions for me, please leave me a comment below and I'll definitely get to reading those. Until then, I'll catch you on the next build.